Neil Binkley. And you are? I'm a professor of medicine in the divisions of geriatrics and endocrinology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I just heard a fantastic lecture by Dr. Binkley in the context of aging and our bone structure. And I wonder if you could just tell a little bit about this new concept you were talking about of dismobility. Sure. So basically the concept is that we think we need to be moving beyond just looking at our bones to improve the reduction in fracture risk and falls risk as we age. So what you're saying, just to make it clear, is that in aging your focus here is on breaking your hip when you fall and a new look at how to think about it. Not just the hip. The hip, I think, has obviously terrible consequences in that hip fractures take us out of our homes, take us to the nursing homes, and actually cause us to die. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other fractures have quality of life issues as well. So y your focus on the hip fracture is correct, but I, I would extend it a little Any bit fracture. further. Yeah, and, and uh, the concept then is to appreciate the radical concept that bones live inside people and uh, recognize that as we age we lose not only bone density but we also lose muscle mass and in today's world we tend to have an increase in fat mm -hmm. so we're asking weaker muscles to carry around a bigger amount of weight and therefore increasing our likelihood of falling down and when we fall down things break. And you talked about the analogy, it was a wonderful analogy you gave about one, a certain vehicle pulling uh, something right. else, so maybe, maybe you could just right. mention that. Yeah, so that was the concept of a moped pulling a speedboat. If, if you don't use a small motor to pull a big load. And uh, that, was, uh, that, that is the concept of so-called sarcopenic obesity, which means we don't have enough muscle to carry a larger amount of weight. And you talked about really three overlapping things that happened. You talked about a loss of bone, and you talked about a loss of muscle, and a gain of fat. Correct. And when all that happens, what happens to the person? Well, I think you and I recognize that as aging. Right. But uh, uh, clearly, our, our, uh, you know, I do not have the muscle mass or the bone mass, uh, or for that matter, the fat mass that I had when I was 30. Um, but the consequences of that triad are that we are less able to do our usual activities of daily living, we're more likely to fall, we're more likely to get injured with the fall, and we're more likely to break when we fall. So that triad, so people observe that they've, and how would they observe, how would they know that they've lost bone mass? Well, you can't know that you've lost bone mass. So you and I don't feel our bone density any more than we feel our cholesterol. So to know what your bone density is, your bone strength, you need to measure it. And so that's the bone density testing that you heard about today. Um, the, the muscle loss uh, and the fat gain, that you can look in the mirror and to some extent note that. And so you showed some simple tests that people do sometimes like a strength, a grip. Correct. So there is a lot of interest in the fracture risk reduction field to bring in not just measurement of muscle mass, but also measurement of muscle, if you will, quality or performance. Mm -hmm. And for the last 30 years, we have, would have liked to have a bone quality measure that we really don't have. Mm -hmm. Muscle quality, though, we can speak to simply, just asking people to squeeze a dynamometer and saying, how, how strong is your grip strength? Mm -hmm. Or to simply ask them to walk and measure their gait speed. So these simple and free, basically, tools, I think could become part of routine clinical care in the not horribly distant future. So if you're going to tell women in, in and around menopause kind of a take-home message that they should really understand in terms of staying well and preventing fractures of bones, what would that be? A one-word answer would be exercise. Mm -hmm. 
a more complicated answer would be exercise plus eat food, so have a well-balanced diet, mm -hmm. uh, a good calcium intake ideally through diet, a good protein intake through diet. I think getting an assessment of your bone density is very reasonable, much like knowing what your cholesterol is. What age should they do that? Uh, that's a complicated issue. Um, I, I think clearly every woman should have their bone density measured at age 65. I think all the organizations agree with that. I think mil most of the organizations agree with women uh, getting, women who have risk factors for osteoporosis, getting their bone density measured at the time of menopause. I know I'm a proponent of that because by the time you're 65, if you're going to have osteoporosis, I think you've already got it. The horse has often left the barn. Right. Well, I'm going to thank you very much for sharing this and making people aware of it's not just about your bones. Your bones are part of your body. They live in your body and your muscle strength and the, um, the amount of muscle and the amount of fat have a big impact on your risk for future fracture. You're welcome.